Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. This is episode 118. You follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Special guest in the building. Introduce yourself to the audience. Uh, Near Costello from the top of the hill. You know how that go. For me, stamped at all times. Near Costello, Cleveland. Too scared to be this stamp. I appreciate you for having me, bro. That's yeah, ain't no doubt. We're going to get into how we met all of that. You know what I'm saying? How to network these whole situations. Now, let's hit the rundown. E Block Radio Network every Monday, 2 o'clock on the E Block Radio Network, the exclusive home of the video for the How to Hustle podcast for hype. 2 o'clock every Tuesday on the GFT Radio Network, Wednesday, 216 to blend, 12 midnight, 8 a.m., 8 p.m. And then we go Thursday, I say podcast radio network at 10 a.m. on Fridays. The rest of the week is wide open. West Coast, what's happening? Dirty South, what's happening? Uh, Custom Hustle World, Custom Hustle Co. on Twitter. That is my clothing line. As of now, if you're watching the video on the eBlock Radio Network, you will see that the CH3s are now available. The CH3s. Now, mine say hype on the back because they mine. Yours don't have to say hype. For people who I've seen who've seen me with these on, yours ain't going to say hype unless you want them to say hype. Mine say hype, though, because they mine. <laughs> But available in all colors, the CH2s and the ones are still available. And you know we got the custom jerseys, the custom jackets, uh, the track jackets, the sweatsuits, the sweat shorts. We now got the collared shirts in too. You know what I'm saying? So if you got an interview or something, we can get you right that way too. Right. <laughs> when I tell you I own when I tell you I own the outfit, I really mean that. But um, <laughs> the custom jackets are also, like I said, those will be available. We're getting into the fall now. You know what I'm saying? You'll be able to grab those again, too. You let me know what your design is, and we'll let you know how much it costs. At Custom Hustle Co. on Twitter, at Custom Hustle World on Instagram. H2H Cleaning is my cleaning company. We do roofing, plumbing, HVAC, flooring, carpeting, cleanups, cleanouts, and remodeling at H2H Cleaning on Instagram only. Now, there. You ready, bro? Yes, sir. First of all, let's let's start this off correctly. My bad, because we didn't do this right. Salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My maze he gave me the whole rundown and I half came with it. Copy. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right. So I met him. Uh, this is another one. Sipping with Sam. Shout out to Sam and Si. Uh, I met I made a lot of good connections that night. You know, I'm always with the networking situations. So all you gotta do is show me the show me the block that the, that the door is on, and I'm gonna kick the joint in and I'm gonna get everybody through it. <laughs> um, so you know what I'm saying? You put me in these situations and I can network them. And uh, I think I met you though. In fact, I met you at City of Dreams. I met you at one of Sister Talia's situations, didn't I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was down we at the, the Met. Yeah, the Met. Copy. See, that joint, she hit me and said, Yo, look, I love it. You come down and do some interviews and all that. She hit me two days before the situation. And I'm like, Damn, I ain't even ready. But, you know, best thing you could do is go show face and you never know what it'll lead to. Nah, but, for sure. <laughs> That's John. I had, um, I had, uh, Leek Moss was bringing me out. Leek Moss was doing this set and he, uh, hit me up and wanted me to come out. And do the song because I got an unreleased song with him that ain't come out yet. He wanted me to just do my hook and um really just come out and show love to that John. So I had popped out for him. We call that a tease in the business, you know what I'm saying? That John sure. ain't even out yet. We just giving you a snippet. Um, mm-hmm. so now we're gonna start there. This is a rapid fire episode where we just gonna fill out some topics and you tell me what you think about them and when I give you my answers too. Networking, we're gonna start with that one. When you hear networking, tell me what you're thinking. Uh, network. When I hear network, I think about uh, business. I think about how uh, you have a company and I also have a company. We can swap out. We can do a collab. We can also bring each other to the point where, yeah, I help promote your business. You help promote my business. Things like that where we also, we meet each other, we shake hands, and we also agree to help each other to climb up the mountain of success. So when I think of networking, I think of how we can better each other and make money while doing it where we don't got to backdoor each other. We can always walk through the front door. So my joint with networking is networking is how it all works. I don't care if you're selling water ices on the side of the road. <laughs> if you know you're how right. to talk to this boy who's going to pull up at this red light every day at 5 o'clock, you know what I'm saying? That's networking. If you know how to talk to people, when to talk to people, what's the you get in the room and what's the opportunity, who to go at, who not to go at. All of that stuff is it. Like you're saying, yeah, it is all of the share each other posts. Sometimes you get I get stuff that don't even be for me. Like you said, other people who that got, like, well, he just do t-shirts or he do this, that, or whatever, and it's like, all right, well, you can't meet it at what I'm asking for, but that don't mean that the money can't still be made, 
And sometimes the money being made ain't all about you making the money. Sometimes the radio station hit me about a spot and it's just not a spot for me, but that don't mean I don't know these two girls who got to show it be perfect for it. These two dudes right. who got to show that it be perfect for it. So networking is how anything works. Networking is how you build these relationships and how you get prosperous relationships with people. Because if you do narrow-minded to networking, you're in the wrong business. Yeah. You can't be in the sales business of anything if you don't know that's gonna be too shy. So I noticed, yeah. I noticed that like with a lot of with a lot of rappers and a lot of people that's just in this industry amongst our people, we be too shy. We be too. I don't want to seem Joe. I don't want to seem like I'm asking for help and all that. But whole time, that's what you need to do. None of these white people that's in these type of situations is, is having these type of problems where they scared to ask for help or they scared to even shake a hand. Like the dumbest thing you could ever say is, "I don't want to ask for help." You, everybody need help. The dumbest thing to have is somebody have knowledge about a situation and you deny that knowledge and hurt yourself because you yeah. being too proud to receive that knowledge. <laughs> so I got a the clinic. I got a job doing something. Yes, daddy, daddy's working. Go ahead. Um, okay. Um, I got a cleaning company. We doing a job where it was something I had never cleaned before. But I know bro in St. Louis got the cleaning company. Shout out to Bobby Dollars. If I hit Bobby, he knows exactly how to clean this joint up. So Bobby got that. I called Bobby. Hey, bro, what do I need to do? He tell me exactly what to use, how long to leave it down there, and then when to clean it up. You'd be a fool not to use your resources and not learn from people who got more experience than you. Right. My bad full-time dad, as you can hear in my little. <laughs> as you now, said, as you next said, one, I respect uh, it. <laughs> This one is for you, and we don't do no editing here. That's what we in there, all streaming platforms. Tell them when they hit the button. You know I'm saying we only accept five stars, not four. Um, <laughs> this is one for you now. This is yes, one sir. in your lane. Rap game. When you hear rap game, what you think? When I hear the rap game, I think about business. I think about uh, networking. I got to still that word. I got to recycle that word. But when I think of rap game, I think about business, and I think about politics. Since I've been in this rap situation, I noticed that everything is about politics. See, because I did so much time in prison, I went to prison when I was 15, came home when I was 23. Don't it's a lot of... Nope. <laughs> I'll be, I'll be, I'll be, it was a lot of... um. It's a lot of policies that I don't have, like, on, on the type of time. Like, I didn't grow up with this people. I didn't grow up with these people. Everybody I grew up with still in the yard, you feel me? So mm -hmm. I got to work double the time because I got to show my talent. I'm really talented. I'm not really a junkie rapper. I'm not a rapper that's... I pop up perk and I get it in. Got me feeling too different. I'm healing in. I don't like. I, I when I rap, I really got bars. When I rap, I really got metaphors. I got a story. I got a. I'm really pressing the timeline. I'm really pressing the who I am. You're learning a, a part of me every time you hear a song from me. So when I think about rap game, I also thinking of I think about politics and I think about business because I own every beat that you ever heard me rap on. I own that beat. I own it to the T, to the strings, to everything. I paid for it as mine. I'm not stealing nobody's music. This ain't no YouTube. There ain't none of that. You see, when you met me, you told you everything I got on, I own. So, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? That's my language. And when you met me, I said, you know, I'm trying to do. This is one thing I remember from meeting you. I said, no, I'm trying to. You said, bro, you're not trying. You're doing that shit. That's something that now I like to give people their flowers. You know what I'm saying? You, you gave me, again, somebody gave you some game. You can't never know so much that you know every damn thing. You threw that at me as a passing comment in the conversation that we having, but it stuck with me. That joint was like the little rabbit punch, ah, right in the ribs. Damn, that was, <laughs> you right. So now whenever I tell people, I never go with the, I'm trying. No, I'm doing dot, dot, dot next. Like, yeah, we're going to have sure. the soccer jerseys next. Yeah, the threes is going to be out next. I forgot the flip-flops is out now, too. Um, like, Heavy. forget we ain't, do, we ain't trying because we doing. So I salute to you because you threw that one at me and it was like, damn, I didn't even know that that was one that I needed to internalize for myself. Um, yes, now, when I hear rap game, something that you gave me was artistry. You're mm -hmm. talking about the talent of creating music, not just talking on a beat. Like <laughs> When yes, I hear sir. rap game now and I think watered down and niggas is BS and it's not as much talent out there uh, yeah. because it ain't the way that it was when I was coming up. Like, now, music is always going to be subjective to the time and place, how old was you, what was going on in your life and all of that. So copy. I ain't mad at you if you're 15, 16 and you think this is the best shit ever made. I mean, you're supposed to because yeah. be the, these are going to be the glory days for you. So, I mean, I ain't for mad sure. at you. But when I hear rap game, I just hear like shit that ain't like it was. But I'm also not in on the other side like you is. Um, and we're going to get into your music a little later. Again, we call those teases in the business. 
Um, since you brought it up, we wasn't going here right now, but we going now. Jail. I listen to your music. So I'm going through the joint and I'm hearing a couple of things that are some running themes. Mm-hmm. So six one is one that I'm hearing a whole lot of. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so yeah. jail is where we're going right now. What did you hear jail? What you thinking? When I hear jail, I think of um ah man, I think of my history. I think of uh I grew up in prison, so I think of like my teenage years, I grew my first facial hair in prison. Uh, for me, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I feel like, I, I think about a lot of lost time, but I think about a lot of learned lessons. So I think about a lot of things that I learned. I, le- I think about a lot of time that I learned, a lot of books that I read, a lot of uh, me time that I had, that I was forced to have. And me being in, in jail or prison, I feel like, I learned, I learned how to maneuver and who I am as a man. I've been around every man that you could possibly think of. So me being around every man that you, I've been around every type of personality schemes to the good men, to the, I didn't do it, to the, I did it, to the, I'm lying about my case, to the everything that you could think of, I didn't been around. So because I've been around all these individuals, I know how to maneuver. I know what to see. I know how to, how to analyze and who, who, and who not to really be around. And like, it just, it helped me understand who I am as a man. So that's definitely what I think about when I think about prison or jail. Something that you said in one of the songs was like, I just listen more than I talk. Mm-hmm. Listen more than you talk is how you, is how you know I'm listening. Um, this is how you know, though, how you learn. It's just listen. People just, if you just let somebody talk and let them ramble, they gonna tell you all you need to know. Yes, sir. You know, everybody in jail got 12 bodies. I had 12 bricks. I hit all the bad chicks. Uh, yeah, old time, you. old time, <laughs> the house, old time they live with their mom. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so now I'm gonna give you. See, this is how we came up with both sides of the wall. It was a, was a uh, special that I did for the podcast. I think I did four parts of the series. Actually, part five will be next week. Uh, shouts out to Ken Rock. Ken Rock gonna be on next week. Uh, part five, for both sides of the wall. Huh. Um, for me, Jell is sitting at the table in my crib. Me and my wife, she's not even my wife at the time, 14 envelopes, 14 of my niggas is in jail sending everybody flicks. Is mm. going to see his mom, going to check on his daughter, going to check on his son, going to see his sister, going to talk to his son, getting some cleats for this one. Like, I'm that guy. So when I'm a kid, though, my dad is holding down this uncle and that uncle. So this is what you're supposed to do. Your man fall. You don't just act like he disappeared off the face of the earth. My brother went to jail in 06, bro, was 17. He's still in jail. <laughs> so, bro, you was 19. I went to jail. Nigga, I'll be 40-something when you come home. Like, but ain't the time he calling and I'm just, oh, no, nah, I was too busy. I don't care if I'm on a honeymoon. Nigga calling, like, is you good? Oh, yeah, right. all right. Now, I might be able to tell you right now, all right, look, bro, it's not a good time. But I'm going to give you the chance to tell me whatever it is, because you never know what them phone calls will be. And damn, they go my wife calling right now. Love you, baby. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, jail for me is you're supposed to hold your man down. You're not supposed to act like he disappeared. And for some niggas, holding me down is just make sure my mom is good. I got to do this time, and I'm going to have to take care of this. But just make sure you check in on my son. Like my one man, he got a couple of kids. He said, you got him. You got her. You got her. You don't care about none of the rest of the kids. You just take care of him. You know, you know what I'm saying? So that's what I hear. If jail is make sure your man is still good. Make sure he getting some letters. He getting some flicks. Make sure, like, niggas always say that. Make sure your name getting called. be everything. Ten pictures. O- ten pictures change your whole day. Like, for real, I know an old name Khan, man. Khan got 45 years and probably 48 now since I've been, I've been home for three years. Khan said he did a case. He caught a case with four individuals, and he the only one that got caught. Never told, never did nothing. He said, out of all, out of all four of those individuals, he's it's only one person living. And he said, out of all those individuals that he was in the car with, he only got thirteen dollars out of everybody, thirteen dollars, and he got thirteen dollars from him. And it wasn't even from him; it was from his mom. That's all he got from any of them individuals, and he took the whole case. I mean, listen, uh, jail can be a whole conversation because. And like I said, I did. A, I got a series on jail, both sides of the wall. You know I'm saying available now, all streaming platforms. You go back through it. We did. Uh, uh, damn, what was it? The relationship. Uh, somebody in jail, somebody holding you down on the streets. Relationship with your kids, guys and a girl being in a relationship, give you both perspectives and welcome home. But like I said, next week's episode, Ken Rock, it'll be part five. 
Like, look, uh, real quick, real quick. I said, I said, friends turning to enemies, strangers turning to fans. I can tell if it's real or fake by the shake of a hand, the slight of a glance, the look of a smile, vibe of a man, the status of friends. Uh, my main flaw is for my dogs. I overextend. I make sure they good if they doing the bid. When they, on behalf of their moms, I'm taking out trash. On behalf of their kids, I make sure they fed. On behalf I of their girl, that. I know where that line is. <laughs> like, I heard that. Like, this real rap. Like, this ain't. This is, this is another one. Like, I'm the type of homie, like, told my man, like, I'm the type of homie who, if you left $100 in ones and me in the house with your girl, the bread going to still be on the table and your girl not going to say, I came at her. <laughs> I'm not being at house. I'm out. I don't know why you need me to be in this house, but that's my man. <laughs> since, you went, right. since you just went, you just went to bar, so now they go another one. Your daughter, because you had the whole joint about your daughter being born and all of that. Since you just gave us some bars, you got a whole mm-hmm. joint about your daughter. When you yes, talk sir. about your daughter, because I got two daughters. I don't got no son. I got two daughters. So yeah. <laughs> talk to me about your daughter. Um, I think about, I think about why I named, I named her, I named her after um. I named that after one of the first women that was martyred in the slam. Uh, so when I think about my daughter, I think about strength. I think about resilience. I think about, you know, fear, fear of her Lord. I think about humbleness. I think about bashfulness. I think about purity because she's so pure. She, she's so innocent. She's so loving. How old is she, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, she turned two in September. September 6th, she turned two. So it's like... Yeah, I'm thinking- my wife's birthday. Yeah, it's heavy. I think <laughs> I, I I just think yeah. about so much. Like I just think about I can have the worst day, and then I see her face on any. I can see her face walking the house, and she run into me and, and grip my leg. <laughs> like that's my baby, man. And I feel like I just think about protecting. I feel like I gotta protect her from all types of evil in this world, man. Because it's like that's how that's why the women are the way they are now. Because a lot of these fathers wasn't there. A lot of these women is hard nowadays. A lot of these women is is, is not to even say it like that. They men. They're not even women for for. They got they turned themselves to be men. I want my daughter to be a woman. I want my daughter to be a wife. I don't want her to be a real bitch. <laughs> like I want to be a wife. I be that man. I don't want my daughter to ever use this phrase that she's a real bitch because that's not the kind of girls that I'm raising. Um. Uh, so, all right. I got two daughters. And I remember telling my wife this when my youngest daughter is born. When I used to come to the old crib, when you open the door, you had to come up all the way up the steps to get, like in the apartment. You can hear her run across the floor when she hears that door unlocked. Yeah, for sure. So she would be like, daddy's home, daddy's home. That feeling like is something that you can't even describe and like explain to nobody. Describe like, it. That's what I instantly think of when I think of my kids. My oldest daughter, too, like when they do the ultrasound, she won't open her legs. So we don't know if it's a girl or boy until they she come out and give her to me and say, it's a girl, dad. So, like, I instantly just think of, like, whatever you show them is important is what they're going to think is important. If you can remember what it smelled like in your grandma's house when you was three, why you think they're not going to remember none of this dumb shit that you did in front of them said and none of that? So, like... I instantly, just, I instantly just think about like the things that I do, the things that I say, the things that I show them are important. I think about just the responsibility of that situation when I think about my daughters. And I think that I just was just, just told you we was late doing this because I was there a situation and man said, damn, bro, I ain't seen you in a minute. And my two daughters is with me at the joint. <laughs> and I'm like, that's why you ain't seen me. I'm in the house with them. Yeah. Like, Islamically, they both got prayer rugs. My daughter never missed the id until the shutdown. My daughters was at Juma yesterday. Like, because right. that's what it is with me. Like I said, what you show them is what they're going to believe is important. What you teach them, the things that you put in front of them, you put ignorance in front of them, then that's what they're going to gravitate towards. Or you also got the people who go strictly far right from whatever the hell you taught them. So right. That's but it's still insane. based on how you taught them, though. It's still, it's still based, on based off the, you know, yeah, the foundation that you gave them. Um, all right, now here we go with this one. Loyalty. Again, because I keep I hear a lot of you saying is the six one, six one. This is what I got on is the block. So you know what I'm saying yeah. the hat over here in the bag is the block. So six it's six one for you, it's twenty third street for me. Like, right. So talk talk to me about that one. So uh when I think of loyalty, so sixty one, sixty one is the sixty one hundred block of Washington, a Washington uh uh, uh, Washington Lane, 
So the 61 block of Washington Lane is the 500 block of uh, Musgrave. So it's Washington Musgrave in Germantown. And um, I think about like, when uh, I think about- damn. Hold up, your connection went out for a second. Technical difficulty, sorry, y'all. Go ahead, you said the 6100 block and then you start going out. Uh, 6100 block is based off a of 6100 block of Washington Lane and the and, and, and it crosses, the intersection is uh between 6100 block of Washington Lane and 500 block of, of Musgrave, Musgrave Street. And um, so it's Washington and Musgrave in Germantown. So when I think about loyalty, I think I think about my brotherhood that I made with the individuals that I grew up with, even the ones that I'm not close with now, even the ones that you know see that see all the movements that I'm making. That I might not even talk to every day, but they still know it's love because everybody, you know, your your mother tell you that, your grandma tell you that, all your friends are gonna always be your friends. You you got you understand what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, it's like I still share some type of brotherhood and camaraderie with these individuals. When I think of loyalty, I think about the people that never left me for dead, that gave me the best that they could. Because at the end of the day, it's like when I went to prison, we were still kids. We still was living with our moms. We still was doing certain things that we was doing. It's like, I can't expect y'all to do 100% come to see me every day. So I, I appreciate every letter that they ever sent, every that picture that they ever a, sent. That nigga got a math test. He can't be. You know what I'm saying? No, listen, no, seriously. I went to listen. I went to prison. You my, said when you I went to jail. I'm 15. Yeah, I got when you. When I came home, I came home. My man Mike, right? My man Mike, PM. So he was telling me like, man, I remember, I remember you went. I remember you got booked when you was on a Sunday, bro. I remember I had to go to school the next day. Like I, I guess crazy. Like I really had to go to school the next day, and you was really on some going to jail type time. Like that stuff crazy when I think about it. So it's like when I think about loyalty, I think about all the effort and, and good intentions that my homies made for me. Cause it's not always about the actions at the time. Sometimes you really just can't have that action. Sometimes it's based off the intention. You understand what I'm saying? So I just I'm I'm appreciative of the brotherhood that I had. So when I think about loyalty, I think about I think I'm on my block. I think about the brothers that I had that I don't talk to and the brothers that I still talk to. Something that you just said there though, if you know that the actions have been there, then you know the intentions is pure. Because yes, if you don't, if you don't have any, you can have all the intentions in the world, but if you never acted on none of this shit, then you just talking. You yes, sir. <laughs> so if I know that genuinely, the last three times I called this nigga and told him I needed whatever, and he moved. If this time he ain't moved yet, it's for a reason. Like, and, but, you know what I'm but sometimes I, I, but sometimes I respect when you could tell me like, when you could tell me like, bro, I don't got it right now. I'm gonna try my best, but I don't got it right now. Honestly, it's, sometimes the best thing. But see, that's like I told you, I'm I'm 14 people at the table. So yes, I might have just took care of bro. Like it might be three of y'all in the same jail. And you know I just sent them some money. So that's why you asking me for some money. But you know now I don't got it. Like you know, yes, I sir. just I got this do I got this is my daughter. I got a daughter over here to take care of. You got bills on my own to take care of, and you know I just cashed them out. Like you know what I'm saying? Got your babies, so you know, of course. Yeah. So all right, you gotta wait. But I'm gonna tell you you gotta wait. Some niggas will tell you, nah, bro, I got you. That shit coming on Friday, and you know you don't get paid for another two weeks. But you on turkey <laughs> time. <laughs> um, so when I get the loyalty, uh, think about like the block and all of that. The one thing that I will always tell people is never let your loyalty get played against you. Because mm -hmm. niggas will always tell you, oh, you changed and you ain't acting like the real you and all of that. It's like, I, if you're not acting like the 15-year-old, 17-year-old version of yourself in your late 20s or your mid-30s or your 40s, it's like, I'm not supposed to be still acting like the nigga who didn't have no responsibilities. If all I had to worry about is a math test and then you got a mortgage, you got uh, state taxes to be paying, federal taxes to be paying, and you got a wife and four kids. I can't be acting like the same boy. I can't be moving like the same boy. Nigga just told me, like, damn, bro, I don't know when the last time I seen you on the corner. Nigga, I got kids now. Like, I can't just be out here risking it all for nothing. Like, yeah. because what I'm going to tell, I can't tell them, like, no, nah, nigga stepped on the, the, nigga stepped on my sneak. So, you know, now daddy won't be home for another 22 years. Like, we no, can't do seriously, that. though. Seriously. And hanging around certain people, it's cool for you to grow out of relationships with people. It's cool for y'all to love each other from a distance. It's cool for y'all not to have to hang each other because you might have been perfect for each other at 17, but we ain't perfect for each other at 27. So when you hear loyalty, I always like to don't let that loyalty get played against you because somebody trying to hold you to a standard that they just never grew out of or they some shit that they can't see. It's one thing that I always understand is that everybody can't see the vision. Everybody don't understand what the goal is because everybody don't have the same goals. Everybody's not looking to do the same shit. I'm trying to get the first class. And when mm -hmm. I get the first class, 
I want to make sure that when I turn around, I can say, damn, they go bro right there with his wife. They go cousin, his wife. I don't want to turn around on none of these niggas here, but I also don't want to be talking to you about first class and you don't even know that you're going on the wrong road to get to the airport. You don't even know that this is not the way to get there. <laughs> and it's a thin line between is a thin line between being a fool and being loyal. It's a very you thin line. Know. It's a very you know. thin. So a lot what, of people gotta understand that. And this and this is the thing I always try to let people know though. Like I mean, like I said, with me, is you see with the shit that I got on. This is the block right here. Whenever people see me with these joints on, I got them in a thousand different colors. I got hats, I got shorts, all that shit with these joints on. Let me see. Here go the hat right here because I just came from the barbershop. You know what I'm <laughs> so, but I love that shit dearly. That shit going to always be in my heart. But you can't let nobody ever, not saying that none of these people who are from there, from the block, ever did this. But, you know, you don't know who's listening to this and how this shit hit them. So you always got to speak broadly. Um, now, before we close this one out, episode 1618, we got to go into the music. Talk to us about the music. You got anything new coming out? We got yeah, anything so. that you're saying? Brand new people listening to this. Somebody's listening to this right now in Dallas, in South Carolina, in L.A., and they never heard of you. And you saying, you got to listen to at least these two, three joints to get a better feel for who I am. What songs are those? All right, so right now, man, I'm, I'm at a, uh, I'm about to start dropping more videos. I've been shooting videos like crazy. I, I really just came off a small tour with Freeway where I was opening up for Freeway real, real heavy. So that made me uh, kind of halt with dropping. But I'm about to start dropping more videos to the, because uh, I dropped my first album called Convalescence. Convalescence means, that word literally means a deeper type of healing. It's a deeper type of healing. It's a deeper type of healing for yourself and self-healing. It's the only a way that you can heal yourself. And it's only a way where a person can help you heal to be the better version of yourself. So my whole album, that's all it is, is about me becoming a better version of myself throughout shedding free friendships, throughout love that I had, through me having a daughter now, through me um, directing myself now that I'm home. So now that I'm I'm, I'm at that stage, I'm about, to start, I'm about to start dropping more visuals to that. I got the visual for Better Life coming out. I got a single with me and Leek Moss that I'm about to drop soon. Uh, that's, to be, that's, TB, that's TBA. That's to be announced too in regards to the date. So... Everybody, if you ever want to listen to anything that Nair Costello got coming up, which is N-I-R-C-O-S-T-E-L-O-O on all platforms, I recommend you listen to Better Life, Rise to Heaven. Uh, and I know with me, Oskino, and Odas Rada, that's that's the that's the one. That's the one that, that, that definitely, you know, hits home for a lot of people. When I had a lot that's of That's the one with the men. video, like the jail joint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I had a lot of grown men call my phone and even get emotional to me like, yo, bro, that John's serious. Because we all break down a, a different way that we was affected by prison. Ryder started off with the person that just come in, that's just coming into prison where he just starting his bed and he think about all the bad decisions he made. Oskino come from the old head point of view where you've been in here for so long and you don't got no hope no more. You've been in this joint and they gave you life. What you going to do now? And then you got to stay positive. And I come from the point of view where I'm I'm just seeing how this is affecting my mother. I'm I'm seeing how me and my mom might have bumped heads so much, but at the end of the day, I'm still gonna be her baby. So she's still gonna be front line for me no matter how much we bumped heads, no matter how much I thought the streets was, no matter how much she kicked me out when I was a kid. She I'm still her baby for real, for real. So that's what I know is about. So I would recommend everybody listen to this on stream that song is on all platforms. What's the name of the joint about your daughter? I love that joint. Uh X and M, X plus M, literally. Okay. Like I told you, I'm, I'm listening. Uh, yeah, I, I appreciate know, that. I didn't even know O was on them joints, and this is one thing I always tell people. O is like one of my top five. O top five for me in the city forever. Listen, I man. I met, um, I met Oskino gave me so, Oskino gave me so much game and gave me so much help with everything that I'm doing. I'm talking about he, um, it was to the point where he first met me. He called me up to his crib. I, I mean, I sat in the driveway, played played him like an hour worth of music. He telling me what the what the use. Nah, nah, don't do this. Nah, you went too hard on that with John. This song too long. Cut this joint in the half because people got shirt. I'm talking about O gave me a lot of game man, and a lot of help with a lot of stuff, man. I, I'm forever in debt to him. Forever Short in debt. Attention. Short attention span is why I came up with the podcast drive through. When I started doing podcasts, we was doing live radio, phone calls, ad reads, two hours. And knowing that niggas ain't gonna listen to the whole joint. So then when I start switching up, doing it on my own, I go podcast drive through. Give me a half hour, I'll get you in out. And people gonna always say, damn, y'all could have touched on this. People who know you gonna listen to this interview and say, damn, but you could have touched on this, 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 and this. And it's like, that's a reason why I didn't go there. 
That's how we get you on for the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, and the sixth time. If we bang through everything in this one clip, then what's the point of which you come back for the next time? What are we going right. to talk about? <laughs> you know like you said, teasing them. Yeah, it's teases is what we call those <laughs> in the business. Um, what's the name of the old joint from um, we did like best songs of the decade, and this was my best joint for the decade was – it was 92 Grammy night, Grammy night. Look inside Granny Joy. I saw a stock and I can get the mask to go and rob yeah. the store. That was my joint for the decade. Like, that's yeah. why I said, oh, it's my man. I didn't even know O was on them joints until I'm listening. I just left the joint playing. Didn't see who owned the joint until after it played. I said, damn, all right, well, who was that with him? And I said, oh, shit. As soon as you hear his voice, though, you know who it is. Yeah, but, definitely. Um, and I ain't going to hold you. On, I know, I think, I think. I, I, I never say stuff like this, but on the song I know with me riding Oskino, I think Oskino got the best verse out of all of them. But the song with me and Oskino, the John Myrtle art, I think I got him. I ain't gonna lie. I think I got him. I think I <laughs> I go ahead and take that for me. <laughs> all right, so like just so you know, you know what I'm saying? No, for sure. <laughs> yeah, so real rap. I yeah. couldn't have possibly just did this in my phone. You yeah, but if you're watching the video, then you see that on my you seen what I just showed on the screen. Yeah. Hey, man, I appreciate you coming on, bro. That was episode 118 of the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. This is the first of many. We are out. I am Hype. That's H-Y-M-P-E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. <laughs>